All right, well, we're uh, a couple minutes into the session, so let's get started. Um, my name is Cameron. I'm a member at Maycac Void, which is a makerspace based here in Canberra, Australia. And Maycac Void is a space where makers can come together to share ideas, work on projects, hang out, and uh, have discussions about making things. So what is a maker? A maker can be nearly anyone, from engineers to artists, software developers or scientists. The only common theme among makers is that they all share the maker philosophy, or the maker, the maker idea. That idea is that where most people would be happy with an object, a maker would take that object and say, it's great now, but what would happen if I changed it to make it even better? In this case, taking a uh, Robo Sapien robot, which is like $100, $150, it's not very impressive out of the box. It kind of walks around, uh, talks a little bit. But if you tear that apart, put in a bigger brain, program it to exactly how you want it, you can make it something really awesome. So that's the core idea behind what a maker is. A maker can also be about taking something that might be broken or unusable and fixing it or making it uh, into something else, so repurposing it for something else. Uh, the story behind this photo is, I received an awesome t-shirt from a friend, it was way too small for me. But that's okay, because I have a sewing machine. Uh, the, f the final example I've got here is, uh, of the maker mindset, is a group called the Rat Patrol here in Canberra, who create uh, kind of weird and wonderful bicycles from parts of other bicycles and found objects and uh, ride them around the city. So here we've got a couple bicycles put together from, I think, about uh, three or four other bicycles um, with all sorts of adornments as well. Maypack Void also isn't just a space uh, for people to come together and share ideas. Uh, it's also a place that stores a set of uh, shared tools for uh, making and creating things. Uh, such as 3D printers, uh, electronic soldering stations, a workshop. Uh, we even have like a little home brewery uh, where uh, people can create beer and cider, uh, and lots more. Um, and the final thing that Makeup Void does is Makeup Void runs workshops where uh, people can come along together to work on a uh, common project. Uh, so one of our most successful workshops is our quadcopter workshop, where about a dozen or so people uh, come together, buy the exact same parts, and put them together into a quadcopter under the guidance uh, from an expert from a group called Canberra UAV. And this is a really awesome project, uh, especially because it serves as a basis to uh, go on and do future things uh, through this idea. Uh, so you could add a camera to that quadcopter and fly it around and do aerial photography, uh, you could program it to fly autonomously with a GPS, or you can uh, add LED lights to it to uh, fly around at night and uh, create some awesome photo photographs. Uh, so what are some uh, projects that Make Act Void members have done? Uh, this one was uh, from one of our members, Anton, who I think showed this at Bar Foundry the last year or the year before. And this is just a really simple uh, bubble blower that he's created using some dowel, a motor, a computer fan, and uh, some bubble mixture, and some rope. And that's all you really need to create a bubble blowing robot that automatically uh, creates these massive bubbles. Uh, or you can, again, take some wood, a computer fan, and a battery, and create a little yarn cap that can roll across a uh, rail and uh, travel around the uh, room. This is Chris. Uh, Chris is a uh, prop maker and a member of Makeup Void, and this is one of his creations, which is a um, suit of armor from the popular uh, video game Fallout. Uh, and his prop making has evolved into a business where people from all over the world commission him to create uh, props and uh, replicas uh, based off uh, video uh, games or movies. And finally, this is Lachlan, who is uh, modeling his uh, latest project, which is a Nerf mech suit made from a PVC pipe. <laughs> uh, so he uh, participates in uh, Nerf Wars, uh, which are run in Canberra, 
uh, where groups of people come together and fight each other with Nerf guns, which is pretty awesome. Um, this uh, Nerf gun at the top can be controlled by the uh, joystick he's attached to the uh, right arm there. And he's uh, planning on extending this as well to add kind of a heads-up display, uh, maybe a video camera behind him so he can uh, see what's behind him, and an armoured exterior even as well. Uh, so that kind of sets uh, the tone of what Makak Void is, uh, what people do at Makak Void, and some of the awesome things that come out of Makak Void. And we've got a couple of other members of Makak Void here as well to show some of their projects and uh, talk about what they've done. Um, so next up, I'd like to invite um, which of you would like to come up next, I guess? Miles? Um, hi, I'm Miles. Uh, one of the things I'm sort of doing nowadays is these um, vinyl cutting things, like my name tag here is a, a vinyl cut. Um, I could go into great detail, which I'm sure would be boring to most insane human beings about all the, the machinery and the technique for doing these things. I just think it's quite interesting. I've always been interested in, interested in doing um, design, like artistic design, the monochrome artwork like this. Um, that's a, my dog, Bob, by the way. I stuck him in my cereal container because I couldn't put him anywhere else. And then on the other side, I've got the, um, the uh, Eye of Providence from the US $1 bill, which is particularly fiddly to try and weed out all the negative image from it, you know, did it in the end. Um, some of the stuff, you know, is I tried to do a, a bar cam logo a bit, unfortunately the machine caught on the paper on this one, but um, we can pass these around and people have a look at the stuff. It's amazingly strong, but easy to cut with a knife. Um, so that's, that's what I'm currently doing at the moment, which is, you know, a long way down a rabbit hole from where I started when I'm a video game. Hey guys, um, I'm Jamie. I've only just sort of recently started getting involved in Make Hack Void in the last month, I'd say. Um, so I'm still very new. Um, one thing I've been looking at is doing a lot of stuff with Raspberry Pis. So I'm going to pass around some stuff if you want. So um, I've got a, a, I suppose they call it a shield in the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi world as well, where they just lots of you a couple of buttons that I've been uh, yet to write any code for to get working. But one of the things I did, one of the things the new space has, Makehack Void's recently moved to a new space. Um, and we're in Downer, we're now in Junindera House, so in Belcon, and if you know where the old water police station was on the on the lake there. Um, so one of the first things, you walk up the stairs to the upstairs bit, and there's really uh, almost a three, I guess it's 180 degree view of the lake. And it's really, really pretty. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do was capture as much as I could to do with that. So I've Got a little Raspberry Pi that I've built that just sits on a pole and takes photos every five minutes so that we can do cool stuff like. There we go. So we can do some cool time lapse stuff. Um, so that's taken over the last four days, I think, and just stitched together using FFmpeg. But um, you might catch glimpses of uh, yachts and canoes and things going past. So that's another thing that, that sort of happens on the lake is lots of interesting. Uh, traffic, that's the good word, thank you. You see in the background there's a, a construction area, that's the Lawson suburb, so I'm hoping if we can get the camera set up and leave it long enough, we'll be able to stitch together a photo of a day, every day, of Lawson being built, which might be interesting to watch. Anyway, that's my bit. Brenda, did you have some yeah. So. I've been, um, another thing we have as well as the uh, 3D printer that um, ca and, uh, Cameron showed is we also have um, computer driven uh, mills, like a, 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 the small one is uh, made for jewellery makers, but I've been trying to work out how to make name badges, so I'll just pass these around. That's just a trial on NDF, which is nice and cheap to see um, how to drive the thing, and then we've started using some acrylic to uh, cut the um, names into that. And so the idea with that is to then uh, probably use that same thing I've been passing around. If you hold the uh, if you hold the power on one of the LEDs for a while, uh, it will cycle through different colours. So that was the idea was to have colour cycling LEDs on the on the main badge. The other thing I wanted to show is there's also a lot of um, there's a thing called an Arduino, which this is one of the ones that looks like an original one. Um, and what that does is 
you can plug it into your computer for programming it, and it's got a chip on it that can hold a small amount of computer program. And, or you can use it just as an interface from your computer. So it then has all these plugs along here for digital and analog. So you can have things like, um, that's a temperature sensor that you could plug into it. So you could use this to be finding out what the temperature was. And I think that's a humidity sensor as well. Um, you can do things like uh, drive uh, each of these little ones. I'll leave them here so people can come up and have a look. Each of them is another one of these multicolored LEDs that you can set to whatever color you like. So it used to be that they were that size or bigger, and um, that limited to some extent, you know, you had to put it in a case a bit like the Raspberry Pi with the camera on it. You had to sort of, it was a reasonably big lump of stuff. But what started to happen is they're coming out in all sizes now. So that's a slightly less powerful one of the same thing. So you can obviously fit that in a much smaller gadget, and yet it can do almost the same um, stuff. And then the other interesting uh, change is that that's the same again, just a round shape instead of a square shape, and it has a few less sensors. But that's to be used with um, conductive thread for sewing. So it, you can use this for putting on clothing, and the conductive thread becomes the wire instead of the wires you can use for the other one. And the same with these square lights, they were for using on a board like the one that got passed around. And then these, these ones that are the same thing, a little multicolored light that you can use on your sewing things um, to, to drive from. So you might have a temperature sensor that sets this to red whenever it gets over 30 degrees or something. Or, uh, you know, you can do, it's really limited by your imagination. GPS module. Yeah, you can have all sorts of different sensors, GPS, uh, motion sensors, different things. So the quadcopters that you saw, they actually use a similar thing to that with some extra sensors on it to help it know whether it's upright or not. So they use the same, like, so this is powerful enough to control a quadcopter. And we've also got some business cards, so if people want to come up and have a look at things, um, feel free. Probably welcome chance to stretch your legs instead of sitting. Can you get the um, video going? Which video? Um, the quadcopter video. Sorry, the um, one of the new space without the sound. Though. And we welcome, our membership is uh, open to anybody. We welcome people to come along any time the space is open. It sends out a tweet and sends an email. Another one of those kind of things sits inside a, a little box with a knob on it that we turn the knob to say how many hours the space is going to be open. And it sends out an email and a tweet saying the space is now open. So anytime it's open, anybody's welcome to come along. Yeah. And yes. yeah. sorry, children. Um, children's a bit complicated. Our insurance only covers people over 18 using the tools. Um, well supervised. Like if you want to bring your children with you, then you can and you can show them things. And there's uh, some of the things you can do with them there, but generally it's not set up for children. There is a thing called the Questacon Learning Discovery Centre at the Old Mint that's set up really well for children and we work closely with them. If we had enough members, the other thing, Maycake Void is like Bar Camp. It's, it, it, it's sort of like an ongoing unconference or what we call a duocracy. The people who turn up are the people who decide what happens and uh, the people doing things are the ones who control how things get done. So it's very much like an unconference, but in an ongoing community with resources available to use. So please come along and help us make it a more awesome place. Um, so if we've got a couple more minutes, uh, feel free to yeah, come up, have a look at anything we've uh, shown today, uh, ask any questions you have, uh, come up, take a business card. This is a video of our new space in Belconnen, so you can see right on the lake. Uh, beautiful if you have, want to create a uh, watercraft or a uh, seaplane or anything like that. Um, yeah, so anybody have any questions? Yeah. What kind of projects are being built now? Um, a lot happened? of different ones. There's a wiki where members put up, again, part of the sort of unconference idea, instead of the post-it notes, we use a wiki. And so members can propose uh, training courses they'd like to attend or offer to run, and they're usually really informal, like co-learning. Like so, five or six people will get together and try doing something together, 
And often the so-called instructor knows almost nothing more than the participants, like it's just a way of co-learning, working something out together. Um, so on the wiki there's projects, group projects, so individual projects, people can brag about what they've been working on. There's group projects where a few of us are working together on something, and then there's these training courses both on offer and uh, ones people would like to have. So you can sort of make a new wiki page saying, I really want to learn this stuff, who's willing to teach me? Um, so it works, like I said, very much like a bar camp, but through a wiki instead of just a post Can I just come on the Zoom on Monday? Uh, if it's open. So it will be open Monday night because I'm meeting somebody to do some more of that uh, cutting of the thing. Uh, it's, and it will be open on Tuesday evening. Sorry, during the day? Um, there will be people that are there during the day on Monday. Uh, you can have a look at our calendar. Our calendar tells you when we know we're going to be open, and then it's often open outside of times that were announced by the calendar. And we have uh, maker meetups, which are a lot like this, people showing uh, what they've been working on in kind of an informal setting. Uh, on the first, third, and fifth Tuesday of each month. Which means this coming Tuesday is a maker meetup. Yeah, so if you're interested and want to learn more, uh, come along uh, next Tuesday. Or, uh, any or, or any other time, like Brenda said. Uh, the website is makehackvoid.com. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, it's a question. question. Sorry. Go for it. Uh, do you have an indoctrination process or something for any of the more dangerous and larger tools? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so some of our tools do need training. Um, one of the tools that we're actually working on acquiring right now is a laser cutter, which will obviously need some training. Uh, so for those more dangerous things, uh, there is a induction process. Uh, but for most of the tools that make Void, it's covered by a general introduction to the space and um, yeah, tour around the space. It's generally we expect everybody to behave sensibly. So if you don't know how to use something, ask somebody to show you how to use it. We don't have a lot of sort of strict rules. I mean, there is a safe health and safety policy, and that basically says in it, be sensible. If you don't know how to use a drill, ask somebody to show you how to use a drill before you kill yourself with it. Yeah. Safety is your responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you.